Welcome to Copycat Friday, guys. My name is Jordi for Cinecam.net, and this is a series where we recreate a popular film technique. Today, however, I totally forgot about Copycat, so uh, I'm sorry, guys, but no episode today. Oh, look, it's Janik over there. Hi, Janik. How can you forget Copycat, you fool? What did he just say about me? You know what? <laughs> look at this. It's Janik. Take this, Janik. Damn you, Jordy! <laughs> Look at him! So I guess I accidentally did create a new copycat episode. Well, this was actually inspired by Zach King. He used to perform this trick to get into a taxi. I'd rather do it to tease other people by turning their car. You know, it's really fun on a highway. You guys should definitely try it there. No, Jordy, don't do it! We'll be doing this editing trick with Adobe Premiere Pro today. And if you are new to this editing application or you'd like to refine your skills, then I'd welcome you to our brand new Adobe Premiere Pro class for beginners. The class hasn't been out yet for a month and we already got almost 500 active students. You'll get many practices, quizzes and demos to get you started with Adobe Premiere Pro in no time. Now we have our class hosted on Skillshare, who's giving you not only access to this class, but also to our other DSLR filmmaking and color grading classes, plus thousands of other creative classes from various teachers. And if you follow the first link in the description below, you can start your first three months for only 99 cents, so you'd be crazy not to. So here is how we did the car trick. First of all, you want to film everything from one fixed point with your camera on a tripod. While your camera is rolling, you need to film three different shots. The first one is a complete empty shot. The next one is the driving car and you might also want to film when the car is being dropped back down. And finally is yourself picking up that car. And for this you'll need a matching toy car. Important is that your distance towards the camera is at the correct distance so that your toy car seems to have the same shape. Now there are two ways of doing this trick. The first one is where you want to grab the car, but stop your movement just on the point where you want to pick it up. Someone else puts a toy car in your hands and you play your act further. Now we have explained this technique in depth in another Zack King tutorial where we show you guys how to copy money. The other technique is where you hold the toy car in your hands, but kind of cover it up like a magician. Just as you want to pick up the car, you reveal it in your hands. Now this comes with a little more work in post-production, but we'll show you guys how it's done. With every car comes a driver, so that's why I'm also cutting out Janik right here from this miniature picture so that he can fit in that car. <laughs> now let's bring our shots into Adobe Premiere Pro. Place your empty shot on video track 1, the shot of yourself picking up the car goes to track 2, and the shot of the riding car on video channel number 3. Now first of all, you'll need to mask out the driving car. With the clip in your upper track selected, head over to the effects controls and under opacity click on the pen tool. This allows you to draw a mask around the car. In the beginning this can be just a very rough mask. From the mask path property, we'll enable the animation and adjust the mask over time so that it follows the car. Then find the point where your hand is just about to grab the car. You probably need to nudge the car shot to match it with your hand. And what might help is to decrease the opacity of that layer to reveal your hand underneath. And this way you can perfectly match its position. At this point you want to add a cut into the clip of the car. And delete all the rest after that cut. Because first up we'll need to make sure that our hands come in front of that car. So what I'll do next is duplicate the clip of myself to the upper track. With this duplication selected, I head over to the opacity property to grab the pen tool and draw a mask around my hand. This time you have to be more precise and you do want to cut off the toy car as well. You'll notice that the mask doesn't do much, which is because of the same video layer on track 2. So what we'll need to do here is make the mask from the car bigger so that it covers up my hand from the layer on the bottom. Now you can draw this very rough and even outside of the shot. Just make sure it doesn't cover up your shoulder or any other body parts. We're almost there guys, on the end of your animation you want to add a cut into the shots of yourself. We'll delete everything on the right, resulting back into the original shot that we had before. It's Thursday evening guys and that means tomorrow it's Friday. That means we have to shoot and edit the Copycat Friday episode plus publish it as well in the evening publish. 
publish it in the evening. And um, I'm opening up this red paint bucket right here because yesterday I ordered a red miniature car. But this right here is what was sent to me. It's not red, so uh, we have to start working. And this is all about the details. There we go. And this is how you transform a non-red car into a red car without Premier Pro magic. Dropping the car back on the street is a little bit more simple. It actually works the same way as popping a chicken out of an egg, like we've also done before. So I'm going to go fast over this. Like before, you want to have your empty shot on the bottom, the car shot on top of that, and then yourself on track number three. Draw a mask and a shot of yourself around the area where the car is going to be. And animate the mask from the car, and this should already reveal the car underneath. Then cut out the car from its shot with a mask again, and this one does have to be more precise. As the toy car fades way into your mask, you want to reveal the real car. So a little before, you want to enable the animation for the scale and position of the car shot. Reposition and scale the real car to align it just underneath the drop of the miniature car. Then go a little bit further in time and reset those values to create default keyframes. Finally, you want to add some motion blur to the real car to make the drop seem more natural. Now, since we have created a mask, you cannot do this with the transform effect, unless you nest the clip. So what I'll do in this example is add the directional blur effect to the clip. Change its properties so that it matches with the movement and animate the blur length to let it fade out when the car hits the ground. And this should already give you a proper result. But if you like, you can also add a little bump into it when the car drops. For this, you want to duplicate the car and adjust your mask so that it sits only around the chassis. As for the original car clip, we'll adjust the mask in there as well to take a bit more off the roof, else that roof will be visible when doing your bump. Now when the car drops, the chassis of the car moves a little bit further. You can also animate that through the position. After a couple of frames, bring it back to normal position. And this way, you'll have a little bump when it falls down. After this, make a cut when the car starts moving and remove the mask from the right part of the car clip. Otherwise, he'll move outside of the mask. When this is done, you'll probably notice that you're missing a shadow. So move everything up and duplicate the car shot on the second layer. Remove the mask and make it start when the car hits the ground. Even when I was writing the text for this tutorial video, I had some trouble wrapping my head around these masks and layers, but that's just how compositing works. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to thumbs up this video if you liked it and hit that subscribe button down below to see us every week. But most importantly, stay creative. There's a car. Janik over there. Hi, Janik. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs>